Growing a business can be incredibly difficult because by the time you get to the point where you're able to expand and scale, you've already been drugged through the mud. And now at this pivotal moment, it's time to onboard new people, trust new people, learn how to manage people, and of course, up your skill level to make all of this happen. So it's no easy feat. And what I've seen with so many businesses during this part of the life cycle is a culture that develops, not intentionally, but organically, one that is a stay in your lane or that's not in my pay grade. And that's never a good thing. Let me share a story with you. I was working with a firm in their finance department and the head associate presented a refund. I saw the refund, it was a sizable amount. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, you know, who let this client walk away? Was there no way to salvage this client relationship? So I asked, I double confirmed before processing it. And I said, you know, just out of curiosity, how did this refund come about? Was there nothing that we could do to salvage this sale, to salvage this potential relationship? Because at the time I didn't know if the entire relationship was severed or if it was just, you know, one sale. And the individual expressed that no, in fact, we could not salvage this sale, this transaction, that it was a hard no, that the customer was not willing to take any additional options. And I thought to myself, Eesh. okay. So as the day passed, just because of the way I'm wired, and again, having a deep love and respect for business and knowing how hard it is to acquire a client, I thought to myself, you know what, let me run this by another associate. Maybe looking through a different lens or having additional information, maybe there's something else we can do. Let's give it one more try. And for those of you who have been on both sides, but especially on the consumer side, you can relate to this. When you're somewhere and something isn't going well, you escalate it to a manager. And oftentimes the associate will kind of get smart with you a little bit and go, you know, my manager isn't gonna tell you anything that I haven't already told you because it's policy. And in some cases, that is in fact what happens. The manager comes about and reiterates the policy, but there's a psychological component when you're talking to somebody who may be delivering the message different or maybe from a different type of authority that's delivering the message or has the latitude to maybe extend some additional offerings, right? But I believe the psychology from a customer standpoint is that you just want to see that the people you're doing business with, the organization that you're spending money with, truly, truly cares, truly, truly values you and hears you. So though I didn't have all the information with this situation, I did want to present it to another associate just to get some feedback from a different lens. I dropped it off with another associate. I said, I don't know if you're aware of this client. I don't believe this client is in your you know, account portfolio as it's been managed by somebody else who presented it for a full refund. Do you think there's anything that the organization can do? Is there a protocol? Is, is there something that was just such a hard no that this client said, absolutely not. There's no way that we wanna work with you. Would you mind giving me your thoughts on this? And so she said, absolutely. Within two hours, she circled back with me and said, we're back, she's good. And I go, really? I go, what, what happened? You know, what was the conversation? What changed from hard no, absolutely not, full refund demanding to, here we are. Yes, we'd love to still work with you. And she said, well, she explained to me that out of all of her needs, there was a section of her requests that she needed accommodated. And in fact, we cannot accommodate that section of her request, but it's only 1 15th of her overall portfolio. So we agreed that we would not accommodate that small sliver but we were able to accommodate the additional sliver, i.e. the majority of the business of the transaction. 
and all is well in the world. And so, you know, just to really put a number on it, you know, the original refund request was $29,000. And after having a conversation about this particular segment of the business that had special needs or special requests that in fact we were not able to fulfill or accommodate. We came up with another solution and did not take the business for that sliver. So the $29,000 sale turned into a $27,000 sale, only a $2,000 refund that we almost let go. Now here's the deal. I don't know if the former associate had the conversation and got that in depth with the customer. Maybe it wasn't explained in that way. Maybe the second associate that reached out was able to do a deeper dive into the metrics to make it make sense. Maybe the second associate had better negotiating skills. Maybe the second associate just because it was in fact the second associate took the time to call and now the dynamic and the energy and the psychology between both parties during the engagement allowed for a favorable outcome. Again, I wasn't there. We always want to assume that everybody has gone above and beyond. We always want to assume that all of the parties have every tool in their toolbox they need to be able to shine bright on behalf of the organization, even in these difficult times of negotiation. But again, that's not always the case. Not everybody has the same strengths. Not everybody has the same energy. And frankly, sometimes some people just vibe better than the other. But when you have a culture within your organization that allows for this, so example, maybe the first associate didn't feel like she had the support to be able to have the conversation with anybody else to come in as backup. Or again, maybe she truly believed that it was in fact a hard no and she was doing the right thing. But whatever the case, what I do know is what was presented to me at 9 a.m. as a full refund ended up changing dramatically two hours later. And of course, that's the best thing for the organization, right? So you really have to go above and beyond as a manager, as a leader, as an owner of your organization especially during the time of growth. You have to lead by example. You have to still be very involved with the day-to-day -day operations to make sure that not only are you teaching good habits, but that they have a bird's eye view to see how you handle such situations. Because you can tell them all day what the policies and the protocols are, but people don't learn from being told. They learn from emulating what they see. So until you have the proper people in place that are in fact acting on behalf of you in the way that you would act, in a way that you would support and allows you to sleep easily at night, do not leave your team fending for themselves because all of that hard work to build the business to scale the business can quickly go away because if the A team is stronger than the B team and is stronger than the C team, you will not retain quality. You will not retain your client base.